I was taken to the head of the unit for interrogation. They were accusing me of murder. Ten men beat me for an hour with their batons. My three front teeth had cracked and I was bleeding. For four days, I was hit over and over again. Because of the importance of these complaints, allegations of torture and ill treatment need to be responded to very promptly by national human rights institutions. And the staff must conduct these investigations um, with skill and support from the national human rights institutions to make sure that this function is undertaken effectively. Uh, the first step is to interview the person that's alleging uh, that they've received torture and obviously the staff need to exercise this role with a great deal of skill and sensitivity. And you have to um, respect the fact that people are actually taking a, a great leap of faith to talk with you and especially when they're talking about having been tortured. That's a very difficult thing for them to do emotionally but moreover the fact that there's somebody out there who did that to them, or they're alleging that this is so, that puts them additionally at risk for the future. And so um, one has to be extraordinarily careful. So it should not be an interrogation, it should be a friendly interview. But um, what I want is an honest account of what happened. Um, and it is only possible if the people have trust in me. Uh, I, I can make, might give them the business card, uh, I give them this description, what I am, what my mandate is, what I can, what I cannot do. Um, but then it's of course very much the, the way you are, you are interacting. If you develop this trust, if you, if you stick in the, the normal methods of, of carrying out these interviews, you're double checking certain answers, etc., then you get a true story. If you interview a person who really is traumatized and who went through, through hell, then you have to build it up very, very carefully and that might take two, three hours. Uh, usually when we, we, we visit prisons and we get uh, complaints, the, the way we handle those complaints is, first of all, we need to get the information as accurate as possible with a description of the kind of torture or treatment they're talking about. So we try to get the information. Were you put in awkward positions, for example? Were you beaten? With what were you beaten? Sometimes they prevent them from sleeping. How did they do that if that person has been tortured? Or sometimes in some incidents they, they are treated in hospitals. Therefore, we have medical reports, we have uh, uh, pictures, that we, uh, photos that we get, and we have the information from other inmates. We can verify the information from different sources. And this is a way where you can build the case. We take uh, the complaints that we receive, whether it comes from the National Preventive Mechanism or by an individual, we take them very seriously here. We just go into the cells, we sit down on their beds, we talk to them as if uh, uh, very closely so that they could, we could build a trust with them. And we just tell them what we could do for them, what we can't do for them. From then onwards, whatever we have, we proceed with uh, in order to get any evidences. And if the evidences are enough to prosecute, we have the mandate to do so as well. But to some extent they have a fear of reprisal from the, the officials. Usually um, for the newer inmates, they are not very familiar, they, are, they don't know what might happen to them if they made a complaint. And they are very reluctant to even to write to us. And uh, in order to avoid any reprisals, we have an understanding with the DPRS uh, Penitentiary Department and as well as the police services that letters sent addressed to the Human Rights Commission should not be open and letters from the Human Rights Commission to the inmates should not be open as well. When we um, investigate a case and uh, sometimes they are afraid to complain, uh, we convince them and uh, then uh, after we, we finished our investigations also we come back to the prison, we ask the same prison if he was subjected to any kind of, uh, let's say, ill treatment or etc. And uh, we follow up, you know. Sometimes the, the, the concerns of the prisoners are related to being afraid that if they uh, lodge their complaint, they will be even severely beaten or, or uh, tortured after that. But if we are aware of those incidents, then we, we definitely would pursue the case even more strongly. And we tell them that we don't uh, lodge the complaint. Uh, and if we allow that to continue, then you are 
causing uh, more damage or danger to your own self and to, the, to other uh, prisoners who are uh, being uh, detained by uh, the different security agencies. The thing is that I've been uh, personally in, in many of those visits and you feel how scared the prisoners are to speak out. And that is one of the constraints and the, despite our assurances they might prefer uh, just to go through the process without complaining and hoping that they will be released.